All right. I was laughing at like seeing back to back Djokovic. Which I mean, is an appropriate comparison. Yeah, I mean, yeah, why would we not start with the world's right. best, right? right? Yeah, we're gonna so, show you some things that Djokovic could be doing better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Why don't we bring Djokovic here? <laughs> That's right. I mean, he was busy this weekend, but typically I dial him up and be like, you could get out here. So a lot of times with the forehand, people either want to emulate like the Federer, right, with the short drop, or they want to go kind of next gen where you see the curious. You're somewhere in between. So here, when we take a look at this particular forehand, it starts off really nice. We, we see the unit turn here with the rocket head up. And this is what we talk about when we talk about the two L's. So L number one is one, two. And L number two, as we continue, is right here. There is the second L. So the unit turn is fantastic. And you've done a great job you visually right here you look that. just like Djokovic yeah I mean we can we can see here this is a really good start I mean this is very very comparable now I'll show you where things start to break down though is once you get into this space and the right arm is bent here it continues to stay bent so when you're moving you're losing the benefit of the loop on your stroke because all of a sudden it drops here so you're not really building the moon. Think of it as a roller coaster, right? So like if it's going up in a loop, as it comes down is where it picks up its momentum. You're, you're circumventing that and you're suddenly just dropping and it's dropping. So with the arm doing this, you're truly just better off starting from here because the unit turn up isn't necessarily helping. So what we want to work on is if you watch Novak here, and this is the forehand that I tell most people, this is the forehand you should copy. It's the modern forehand. It's, it's a little less sexy than Fed, but it's also because it's a semi-Western grip as opposed to an Eastern grip, and Fed is just ridiculous on the timing out in front. What you're gonna see here is the space, for one, the space of the elbow to the abdomen, all right? Like, that's what we're looking for there. And you'll see that your space, wrong one, your space is pretty good, but you don't get the, kind, the same kind of separation here. Like, it's, it's much lower, and then it wants to stay pretty connected to the side of the body. Now, once Novak is in this phase, his arm is going to continue to create space. You can see the space is continue to climb here. And this is really what we want to see so that you're using more of that reverse C shape. <clears throat> so here's where you're going to see the biggest difference. So at this point, Novak is loaded off of his outside leg. And as he pushes through the ground, he starts to drive the kinetic chain up, and this is what creates that hip thrust. We we're talking about leading with the hip. But watch what happens now with his hating arm as he uncoils his hip. See how it straightens out? All right, so as we work forward, yeah, it, like, it drops down, and then you're just working through the front end of the stroke. So that is the piece that you're really missing is the back. Yeah, the power swing down, the, the down swing. The, yeah, the back end of the shirt, creating the loop. So you've got the unit turn, but we've got to create the loop. And so as you see, I mean, like Novak's not expending a ton of energy here, but you'll see as he works out to the ball, the elbow comes back in with the same amount of space that it started with. All right, so as it comes through, the arm is, is fairly bent. Federer, everybody talks about the straight arm contact. It's extremely hard. It's ex I'm not a huge fan of it because I think it's extremely difficult to do. What I'm a fan of is the arm straighten out in the back and then it contacts staying a little bit more bent, right? So here we can just see that like your shoulder is like kind of well out in front. You're leaning out to the ball and here the discipline of the, the center line of the balance with the contact, the contact out in front. Mm -hmm. At that point, like, why not just start here, right? Because that's where all the power is being generated from. Yeah, okay. yeah. So okay. it's, it, it's like it, you're kind of faking it. It's like this looks really good, and then all of a sudden the racket drops, and now there's no momentum behind it. There's nothing driving the racket forward, so you have to arm it. So instead, if I'm here, I'm coming up, I continue back, and I continue down. Yeah. So step one, we're going we're gonna to do this in phases. Okay, we'll step, do step one, we're just going to focus on you taking the racket back. And what I would like is for you to focus on the space of your right elbow and taking the racket back with plenty of space from your abdomen 
and then allowing it to rotate. Go ahead and come all the way through, all the way through. You've got to segment there. this too. Like I know you understand the full thing now, but you got to check check pieces. My left arm's almost straight. Yeah. Right, and then when and then when you're back here and you're really back here and then you drive, then you're naturally going to get that. The racket lags. lags. Yeah. Right. So the, the what we're going to do, we're just going to drill this for a minute. And okay. before we even hit a ball, I want you to shadow it. And what we're going to do is a close stance forehand because this naturally creates the momentum out to the ball. So as you prep here and you go to step forward, this should accentuate further back. And from here, you're going to take a small step forward and let it drop. And we're going to create that loop. Uh-huh. Accentuate back. Uh-huh. And yep. And just let the rocket go. Yep, let me see it again. All right, so now do the same exact thing and just hold the rocket with these three fingers. Let the bottom two fingers off the rocket. Yep, and just shadow swings. Yep, and drop your hand all the way down. Yep, so that, that your, this part of your hand's actually like off the racket. Yep, even further, even further. Yeah, See my yeah, yeah, there we go. So this is like, this is how you would hit a forehand like this? Well, I'm just trying to, well, I mean, yeah, I'd have the racket. So when I'm hitting a forehand, my, See where the butt cap is or my hand? Like my, my pinky's hanging on for dear life. Cause that's what I was telling you about. Like I want the dexterity of the wrist to move around. All right, so let's shadow it again. Okay, good. All right, let me see you do it again and keep the chin down throughout the entirety of the stroke. Yeah, yep. Let me see one more, just like that. Same exact thing. Okay, cool. All right, check this out. This is really good. But what we've got to do is get you to let go and relax your arm. All right, so when you come through, see how the arm is staying super bent out through contact? That's still way better though. But what I want you to do is when you take the racket back, keep all of this loose. Focus on the left hand taking the racket back. And from here, just let the racket do its job. So if I'm, if I'm, we always tell people like when you hit your forehand, it should feel like you're throwing your racket at the ball. So if I'm here, right, you can see how loose it is. I want you to watch that again and just watch why my arm straightens out on the back end of it. So when I'm here, watch when my arm straightens out. Right, so my arm is just super loose, but naturally as I start to uncoil, my arm goes straight and then it comes around as that, that, that lever. Wilson's gonna really appreciate this demo. I was so soft with it though, did you see that? I was so gentle. And I, from this point, let's, let's re have a, a little regression and just focus on this piece. I want you to start with your racket all the way back and your arm fully straight. So racket back to me, yeah, perfect. Yep, nope, you were good, just there, so relax it. So like if I wanted to steal your racket, I could, but I'm not gonna steal your racket, so you need to hold it tight. All right, so now, Think about how keeping your arm straight through this phase, how you would do it. How would you use your hip? Um, if I want to keep my arm straight. Yeah. Okay. Now, now do it super fluid. Start back here and use your hips to bring the arm around. Yes. Yeah, again. Yep. Feel where the power is going to come from now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I'll trade you rackets and do the same thing I did, gently <laughs> tossing it into the curtain. Hold on one second here. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Just let it release with your hips. Yeah. Good, let's do it again. Love it. You can break his racket, just don't break that camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't. Give me one second here. Look, Kenny, you're filming me while I film you. <laughs> yeah, meta. Get your heart out, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Good. Mark Zuckerberg would be offended right, cool. to have been All right, so now, <laughs> starting your ready position, 
and just work on holding the racket really loose. And all I want you to focus on here is throwing the racket. That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So now we haven't like really discussed how to throw the racket. You just know how to throw something, mm -hmm. right? And if the racket's back there, as you use your weight, see what just happens there? This part is awesome. Mm -hmm. What's going on with that? It's a lag. It's a lag and your racket is now in the slot. That's nice. And I didn't have to teach you like the, the biomechanics of like, do this, do this. Right. You know how to throw. You've just got to trust throwing the racket when you're actually hitting the ball. All right, so this is a good breakthrough. Yep. All right, so now racket all the way back. Stepping forward. There we see it again, right? And so now we can see what's happening with the butt cap. Mm -hmm. Not only are you going to lag, you're now in the slot. We don't want the slot this way. We want it where it's a little bit more 45, so you can tell it's off-centered a little bit, right? See how the racket's at a bit of an angle? If I, if I draw this, mm -hmm. it's not a straight line. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we want on the slot. Otherwise, it kind of becomes like antiquated flashlight at the ball. All right, so there's contact out in front. You release, and at this point, the only thing that we'd see different on the stroke is that your arm would come back up to the follow-through. All right, so let's see what happens so on the really last the stroke one. stroke is like a lot of those, like you're saying, like the slot, all that stuff sort of just falls into place. It's organic. If you're moving normally, if you're moving correctly. Yeah. The, the tennis gets really, really complicated if you start trying to put things into places, right. right? It doesn't have a flow. And we talked about how elegant, how pretty the game of tennis is. It's like dancing, right? right. So like my wife and I talk about this all the time. She loves Roger Federer. Knows nothing about tennis, doesn't know how to score, doesn't know if I'm winning, doesn't know if I'm losing, but she danced. And right. she was like, I just know that is elegant and that looks right. fluid. But right. if I dance with her, it's like one, two, three. Like I don't know how to dance, so I have to count, right? right? So in tennis, we don't want to count, we want it to be fluid. All right, so from the ready position, arms bent, arm finds this straight position. Do I want to go back in, in, in a hitting a regular forehand? Do I want to be, be aiming to be back that far? I don't want your arm see how it's straight and like this right. let's uh, i'll pull djokovic in a minute i want it bent and then i want it to straighten because you start uncoiling forward yeah so let, let's take a look at djokovic here so both elbows bent elbows still bent all right so at this point there's still some bend in the arm right mm -hmm. now What's important to focus on is he's taking his weight and he's going from his right to his left foot. And we're going to see that. Don't pay attention to the racket for now. Mm -hmm. See how the heel comes down on that front foot mm -hmm. and then the weight starts to shift. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens there is the weight begins to shift. The arm, that's its straightest point right there. It's a product of just getting dragged behind as the weight shifts forward. Yeah. All right, that's good. So what we just looked at as far as you shadowing, that was way closer to Novak, like way closer to it. Here, getting it, lag, and then coming all the way through.